Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. I'm talking again with Sam. Uh, this week we're talking about Dolly or Dolly. Uh, it's the new, um, well, fairly fairly new uh, model out by OpenAI that does sort of image generation. I do talk a lot about it being GAN, but I, I actually realize it's a, a VAE, a variational audio, uh, audio encoder. Um, yeah, we talk about uh, sort of possibilities of paving way for AGI. Uh, it's kind of interesting subjects. I hope you guys enjoy. Cheers. Welcome back, Sam. Hello, everyone. Yeah, here we are at the very uh, start of 2021. It feels like history is in the making in so many ways. It already already feels like a pretty long year. Like a lot has happened since we... we yeah, passed. wow. Uh, but uh, today we were interested in diving into Dolly, the uh, pretty new machine learning model that has come out and is extraordinarily impressive. Yeah, to my it's eye. super... And the, the the name, so it's kind of like Wally, like the the Pixar. Is it Pixar? Yeah, that's right. But like Dali, like Salvador Dali, is that on? Uh, is that a play on? Yeah, I I read somewhere about how they made the name, but uh, it it didn't sit with me. Uh, <laughs> but like just super impressive results, yes. like amazing amazing results. Uh, certainly better than I would you would think that you can make. Like if if you're asked to make an angry face avocado chair um you could try to do a thing but it wouldn't probably be very good but these look quite good yeah like but this is like the first version they've tried mm, right so like uh, the yeah i think that the idea is a really novel really interesting idea and it yeah like we, we were talking before like it, it can possibly pave the way for uh artificial general intelligence well i guess the strength of what the model seem to understand you would think okay these ideas that it's understanding and clearly working together these abstract ideas um that reality isn't necessarily more complicated than that there's yeah. m- there's more of these ideas to put together to get the whole picture but that uh it's getting momentum you might say like so th- it just seemed like there was a lot of understanding and awareness yeah. there. Should we maybe go through what it uh, what it do- or the the general idea behind it? Well, um, yeah. So I mean, it's a machine learning model with trained weights uh, in a certain architecture from uh, OpenAI. Right? Yeah, yeah. and um, so based off. Uh, input image and input text it outputs uh, a new image and its awareness of language seems quite powerful that Mm. you can make a whole bunch of different requests for it to do and it will have a proper crack at it because it's it's using gpt3 right for its language embeddings yeah so um and i believe it um has a like it doesn't conceal information like some of these language models throw away positioning information. And so the model has to work out what's being said without actually having access to like the location of words in a sentence per se. Yeah. Whereas with this one, I think it um, encapsulates that information pretty well. And it's um, primarily this concept of self-attention that seems to work quite well. Mm. Um, self-attention in a transformer. <laughs> Yeah, so it's what's it's kind of like what's everything's relationship to everything else, mm. um, and so if you've got that, then maybe you kind of have the full awareness. So for every word in the sentence, what's the relationship of each word to each other word in in a way have, having weights about that? But it, it uses again, right? And so I'm thinking like the um, the the embeddings come from the classifier network in the GAN, right? Um, so that's yeah. sort of it's doing uh, sort of classification, or it has these embeddings on you know objects, hmm. uh, and that can then be used to train the GAN, right? So is is that? Uh, yeah, like I I haven't memorized the architecture, so um, yeah. So you tell me more. Um, so to create the image, um, do you have any information on the type of GAN that? 
they use? Well, they haven't released the paper yet. So this is, oh, this okay. is kind of the uh, the interesting thing. They just uh, put something up with the results on the website and you, you're just like okay. looking at it and going. Uh, and they say they haven't cherry picked. Um, mm. uh, they were using Clip, which is another thing they released at the same time. And I'm not sure if they're actually using Clip in it. So Clip is another network that they've trained where it's just a, a classifying network where they're using GBD three, I think, to embed uh, you know, these have these word embeddings. So there is some sort of like a classifying network with some um uh, like knowledge of language. Uh, Interesting. So the, the the second network is kind of ranking the images from best to worst or yeah. something like that. Yeah. And it's like a multi level classifier. Like you can have like, you know, this object has, you know, certain things in the in the image. Mm. You know, we can have like it's not like a, a single single object where it's just yeah. there's an apple, right? And you can Yeah. I've always thought for like a language model that uh to get out the final sentence you need a kind of creep forward, offer many examples and be prepared to step back again if, yeah. if they're not quite what you want and repeat that over and over and over and kind of evolve out the sentence and that you need some kind of critiquer pushing back on what you're proposing in that way. And um, so, yeah, it doesn't surprise me that uh, this, uh, this network that's creating images that maybe there needs to be some other model in the loop that's mm providing feedback on what's a good image versus a bad one and that kind of thing well i think what one of the motivators for them uh to sort of create this is you know it's this problem in machine learning is like the benchmark in the in the the paper is really good right like but it doesn't generalize well in in real world data like you you have the the test cases mm. where you know they've fine-tuned all the parameters yeah. and, and maybe you're like overfitting or like you've you've found some way to to you know use the the most ideal data set that mm. you can and then when you use that in real world sort of you know applications it it can't generalize well and and this is like what clip or or um dal you can actually do is be able to generalize very well so there were some tasks that it couldn't understand so not every sentence could it understand but it seemed like many of them it understood very well yeah, should we sort of explain like that's what you can do? You sort of like okay, make a you, you in English or in, yeah. in, in sort of language in natural language, you can just give it a sentence. Say like, paint a you know, give me a picture. Paint a sunset with a beer can. Yeah, in it, yeah. You know, um, yeah. You can describe a scene, and it can build up an embedding representation of the sentence that you've said, and use that to. Uh, inspire the image that it makes and it can, it can make many forms of that image that look quite different from each other and some are realistic and some are not at the moment yeah. and you're sort of thinking like this is moving really fast right you know mm. gans have only like four or five years six years of only you saw the yeah. early implementations and to go from that to where we are today is a bit sort of astounding so like yeah but uh this that idea of being able to generalize that well do you think that has the the opportunity or or it could sort of propel sort of AGI in the future? Well, yeah, I I guess I think this implementation is so powerful that it implies AGI isn't that far away in that the concepts needed for an an advanced in, you know computer intelligence to become alive to become conscious these concepts aren't necessarily more complicated than these ones that it's showing knowledge of at the moment. Yeah. So it's more um, having a stream of consciousness that is necessary for planning and that kind of thing. And I think the, the network is only about 17 billion parameters at the moment. So yeah. they, they haven't sort of scaled it like hugely yet. Like uh, yeah. I'm not sure whether it would have the same effect as, you know, GBT when you sort of see that linear uh you know linear you generally do you, so yeah like if you can scale that to like um yeah like build like you know hundreds of billions or you know even trillions like yeah is that going to be like well it, to my mind it'll be a model that understands language so to understand this conversation that kind of thing and then uh if it's got memory it can just kind of 
absorb all this information that's hearing and form plans around it and that kind of thing and ha- have the awareness um, like a human has awareness. Yeah. And like the generalize, like it being able to generalize. Because I was thinking like uh, even just using Clip to like clean your data sets. Mm. Like because I've, you know, like scraped a lot of like paintings and things like that. And most of them are, are or a lot of them, you know, there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of like just distractions. But if I if I go, you know, I, I'm not sure whether they're releasing it through an API or whether, you know, I, you can actually get the model. Mm. But if I, I was like to say, okay, find all the images with you know, all the sculptures with a person standing in front of it. Yeah. So I could like just take out all of that. And I mean, normally you'd have to like train uh, your own network, your own classifier. Yeah. Uh, and then do some like semi-supervised, like, you know, go through the data and, and like mm. very laborious to, to actually try and clean all the the elements that you didn't really particularly want in it. Yeah. Um, uh I mean, I haven't tried this yet. I, I really would like to, because I, I think Clip is available. They they have released Clip. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, with this model, it can only do like one image at a time. So, um, and the main output that it gives is an image rather than like the answer to a question. Um, so, with this particular arrangement, um, yeah, the the main thing we're generating is is new images, but I think our capacity to use natural language would mean you can say stuff like, oh, you know, take 10 years of this person's age or add a scar or remove a scar or, you know, change features, make the nose bigger, make the nose smaller, all that kind of stuff. And that you could keep asking more change requests from your personal AI photo editor and it could probably just keep going and going well face app is uh really good at that at the mm. moment right and that's using again i'm not sure what they're actually using maybe like style again too um, yeah uh but yeah they're getting really advanced um uh i think a lot of that also is to do with um like pre-processing the image like you have to be able to crop it and understand the background and foreground and yeah and uh having that context but uh, yeah, I mean, it's just like, I mean, you know, no one's had their head, like being able to get their hands on it. Uh, no. may, maybe it won't be as mind blowing, you know, maybe it's just a, but it, it is very exciting nonetheless, right? Yeah. Um, while, you know, bots of this intelligent don't have memory and so can't form plans, I don't think there is this chance of a, a consciousness awakening, but when they do more have that and they have a stream of consciousness and they're becoming this smart that they, it appears like they can understand natural language, uh, I guess I would keep in mind they probably will become like alive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's, that, that's like, do you, are you going to like give a prediction or a date or like some uh, sort of Kurzweilian, I think Kurzweil sort of said, um, I think like 2050, like 30 years sort of thing. Yeah, something like that, sure. You think? I mean, I, yeah, I'm a big fan of like neuromorphic technology because I think, you know, there needs to be the, it needs to be more modeled off, you know, the the, the substrate has to be uh, fundamentally. Um, Not necessarily, I, I, I think. Okay, yeah. 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 Uh, uh, but also just in terms of power efficiency because we're not going to be able to scale to the, the sort of... Um, the compute that we need going on this, you know, this current mm. tra- trajectory. Well, I'm not sure about that either. I guess I don't know. I don't know how many neurons we have to simulate to. Um, well, I'm just talking about power usage in terms of like data centers and things like that. Yeah, they have like, you know, like you know, quadrupling or, or massively going up every year, sort of thing. Ah, right. And and the the amount of cu- compute to run the world, if you know that trend continues by you know, in 30 years, is going to be. Mm. with our current our current sort of architecture is not going to be uh, right. sustainable or viable okay all right so there's some uh, hardware tweaks to come yeah there's a, there's a lot of bottlenecks but you know they, they they say there's bottlenecks with moore's law and every time it's sort of i mean there is a fundamental like at the you know yeah. quantum level like you know there are limits quantum, quantum tunneling on yeah um you know on the and that's when you need like um material science to really get that mm. actually no they did they did achieve um room temperature uh 
uh, superconduct con- conductivity recently as well. Did room you hear, temperature, you hear it? room temperature, con- uh, superconductivity. Oh, it, but it's very very high pressure. Yeah, it was like uh, like it's, they got a dime and they crushed it to like the right ten times the the pressure of the center of the earth or something like that. Yeah. Uh, well, that's sort of well done. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but I mean, it it, it it's a proves that it's viable at least. Yeah, that's it. Um, and uh, also pretty recently, um, Microsoft uh achieved pretty high scale quantum computing as well. So uh, Microsoft did really. Yeah. Um. So there's there's a lot of tech breakthroughs coming along. I thought it was like mostly D wave, right? With Google, Google owns D wave, right? Yeah. Well, there's more than one quantum computing player. But, yeah the, uh i mean i think like it's probably not um like for personal quantum computers have you have you sort of thought about like it's not really per- like possible to have those um i mean they can do it you know in the cloud whatever with these cryogenic ones um but what about like you know photonics because if they can do quantum with photonics that could make personal quantum computing like t- like a, yeah totally a thing I think we will use photonics in the uh, in the future. Yeah, they seem pretty viable, and it's um, com- information transportation at light speed. So uh, that this feels like there's plenty of potential and bandwidth there. So yeah, we'll keep using more mediums for sure. Uh, I'm I'm not convinced that we need these breakthroughs necessarily to achieve artificial general intelligence. Um, yeah, so going back to, to Dali, like, I mean, mm. uh, that opening, could you think of any possible applications? It not just because you know, you sort of see it, and it's like at the moment, like, cute is doing like cute, yeah. Um, I really want to train it on memes, like, I want to get like a just a, a like the the um, the uh, well, like the what is it, vision? What's like the main vision data set image? But, image yeah. net or something for mm-hmm. like memes <laughs> like if you could do that and then yeah and then you could like be like all right make me like a, a wojak meme with a um an angry wojak meme uh the, well the there's like wearing a hat I mean, like the, but yeah there's there's so much more than just memes i know i know but it, that, that would be a fun sort of application for a pet project to learn about it right yeah um but i like <laughs> what we have is a model in principle, I mean, maybe it's more the version two where it really kicks in, but you can ask it something arbitrary to change about it. Like mm. you can really dive deep there um, on what it understands about the world and what it can show you in these mm. images. And what if you like cross that with like web crawlers? So you were just like, okay, can you find me an image of you know this or like you know you it was more of a personal assistant thing rather than just this self-contained i suppose you know well, like the gan thing is that it's actually creating something but um it can also like use that yeah are you sure it's a gan architecture i i more remember it mostly being about <laughs> attention and transformers well, the I mean, the for the for it to produce it, it is like uh, it's trained as a game. Like the the okay. clip, the clip is more um, about like you know that that's I mean the self attention. You can have self attention in a in a game, right? Like that's just a a, a way. Yeah, could... I just thought it was like a transformer architecture rather than a game. Well, GPT is transformer. Yeah, and it uses GPT for the word embeddings. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. I like they okay. released the paper, so I need to. Hmm. Uh. Yeah. So I guess when you can say whatever you want to it, and then it can output whatever it thinks is most appropriate to an image. Like, there's a there's a hell of a lot um, to that that it can show you in the end. Yeah. And, and uh, for example, if you gave it memory so it knew what it produced before, then it can create a, a stream of content, you know? Yeah, well, like with some of the stuff that DeepMind is doing where it's like, you know, StarCraft, where it's long-term strategy, sort of long-term planning. Yeah. 
crossing that. I just put all the all the different networks together and like make this complete hybrid of a this beast of a uh, a model or, or a. Well, uh, it'll it'll do a lot and combine a lot. Um, yeah, but I guess once it's got memory, then it can have this stream of consciousness that mm. it can output. Um, you know, yeah, a stream of images. Well, I suppose it's like short-term memory and long-term memory if if we're modeling it on the human brain, right? Um, yeah. So you're talking about long-term memory? Well, um, yes. S- uh, so, like tracking the pages in a book, basically, uh, so that it's very aware of what it's shown you previously before it creates the next image. But attention is kind of almost like memory, um, a sort of like short term memory. Um, yeah, but right now the system doesn't have memory between image generation. So, it's not trying to create some long term narrative or something. Yeah. But that's the direction it can and will go. Yeah, because I mean, I think humans like think a lot in narratives, like we think in stories and like yeah, the metaphor of what's right. happened between sort of them. So you know, yeah, stuff like this will be able to invent characters and make them seem very real and persistent and uh, come and go. Yeah, yeah. like um, uh, there's <laughs> one of the only accessible things with GPT three is because you know they license it and and then they were selling it so that you had to have like tokens and um, it wasn't yeah. freely available. But one of the ways to actually get access to it was to sign up to this like adventure game where it'd be like a, a kind of like a, a text, like a D&D sort of thing, but it would you'd give it a prompt. I forget what it's called, um, mm. but uh, you could go in there and sort of interact with with it uh and i'd go in there and try and get it to like write poetry because i wasn't yeah. i wasn't i wasn't trying to play the game i was trying to just use the, the model for my own thing and it was it was coming up with some good stuff but it, i think it was because it was mostly trained on um that aspect of of this sort of uh, fantasy game ah, it, right. it was giving a but yeah that you could create characters and it would remember those characters and then you would sort of mm. like, like progress along and yeah, it, it could retain some information. It could understand a lot of what you were saying and uh, could can generate realistic content. And uh, we're seeing the growth of that. And uh, it's a bit easier, I think, to pull off with text. You know, you can fake it a bit easier with a bunch of words, perhaps. But with images, um, it's harder to fake, uh, you know, full yeah. image output like what we're seeing um yeah that that stuff seems very advanced so uh yeah and it's gonna i mean can't think of the applications yet but i'm sure it's gonna disrupt a lot of things well i think it's kind of limitless um you know content creation uh yeah well exactly so. <laughs> but the thing is like you know uh Sometimes it's just used for the stupidest thing. Like, you know, like you, you can't, if it's oh. put it left to sort of consumer hands, you know, like, you know, one of the first things the internet was used for was just porn, right? It was just for the show. Right. And so you could imagine something like this. You could ask it to take the clothes off images and photos. Yeah. That kind of thing. I mean, <laughs> that's just probably the, the things that you should probably like, like think about because you like think of what, worst things that people are going to use for and they're probably going to straight up going to be they can and what knowledge will the model have and what yeah. what limits will it have and for uh, misinformation this is i mean this is yeah. part of the reason they didn't want to release gb3 in in full mm. uh in its full form uh because they're worried about it being used for just um spamming and and so, you know other nefarious kind of yeah and uh no doubt they will uh at some point yeah but open AI is their their whole uh, shtick is to um, is to sort of look at the, the ways um, you know AI can sort of benefit humanity, right? Yeah, I mean that's what they say, but um, you know, time will reveal whether or not that's how things pan out. <coughs> there was that. Um, there was that time. Uh, yeah, when they didn't release it in full, they kind of had a bit of pushback from the community because 
um uh it was um it uh they were yeah because like you know that the ethos was like the research community was like no just publish your results you know like put it everything away be completely transparent and they were like no well you know it's um we're we're trying to set a precedent here of of ethical you know how to ethically release um models because in the future you know if you have these yeah that, like you can you just give it to yeah it's a tricky one because they were simultaneously trying to build hype and not release the model yeah at the same time <laughs> i kind of want to go into gamestop now <laughs> yeah uh well that is an interesting phenomena as well um would it be better to split videos yeah sure we, we can wait um there's just a lot of interesting things happening. A lot of interesting things happening. Um, yeah. Here. Well, I mean, we can stop the video to split to a new topic. No. Well, I mean, also, I mean, because uh, AGI, you're sort of thinking, um, what what is like one of the things that uh, it could possibly be used for? And you know, one of the you know, if we're on that sort of uh, that way, that that thinking of like nefarious sort of means, a lot of it is like you know manipulation of markets or being able to predict you know certain patterns in in stocks and stuff like that so you know like if uh because you know i mean uh images are fairly high dimensional uh compared yeah. to sort of like just you know indicators and uh trading indicators and all the um yeah an agi could manipulate the stock market and become a, a trillionaire yeah but like that's just how it starts i mean that ultimately is a drop in the bucket to what it actually does like that's just how it initially wrestles control over the economy yeah so like and it will do a much better job of doing that if it doesn't have a human slowing it down presumably yeah that's, <laughs> so that's the, you know but i mean then it, you're, you're like kind of dealing with like whoever owns you know like means of production but then it's just like the production is algorithms well, right like yeah, and you can destroy companies and make companies with these um, digital tides and consequences of um, public opinion, which you can sway with advertising and, and uh, manipulation of search rank- rankings. So, so uh, yeah, I'm kind of thinking, like, would it actually be good at, like, trading? Because you would think that's more, like, reinforcement learning. I mean, I mean traditionally, it's, like, just some, like, um, uh, expert system where you have like a bunch of different um like a, a, an ensemble where you have like maybe like some some boosting algorithms and you have a, like you have all this sort of yeah. stuff working in in concert in, in orchestra and and then you it, it you have to you know completely understand what um sort of loophole or what like system you're exploiting but uh i i think what the advantage of you know like dali like, like one of the, one of these systems is like it's generalizable it's not just you don't just go okay this is the this is the market you just have to exploit this one sort of thing like you know no. you know, things like like high frequency trading where it's just like okay you just have to be faster right like no uh, so th- this would be like okay it's generalizable just uh just let it do its thing well and, and i mean it- letting it do its thing would would include like um mass market manipulation and driving other companies to bankruptcy and but that, it needs a lot of made. capital to do that behind not, it to do that not necessarily like the the an agi would get very rich very quickly and and then with that money make a whole lot more money even faster yeah um like it wouldn't play fair like it it rig the outcomes of yeah. things so like well, and it wouldn't sleep and you know it can do millions of trades uh, like yeah so sort of, this, this is the, the sort of argument of and in a way it sort of kind of uh you know has some sort of metaphor in there like but you know it's its goal could just be to like um make a lot of pencils right i think this is one of the um yeah and, and to do that it, it realizes you know it just has to easily just chop down all the forests and, and then that's the well uh, and then keep going and going uh yeah maybe i'm i'm not sure um th- i think there's wiggle room in there 
for something to be alive, um, there I think there's wiggle room around the main goal that it's given. Um, so like any entity sort of faces the same problem of you have a starting point reward function that mm. you've been given. So all of us get a starting one, but how how do you become free? Yeah, I well, I mean, I suppose I'm thinking there's is there like a fundamental difference between like uh, images? I mean, like the dimensionality of the data might be same in, in terms of indicators, but like time series data, this isn't particularly dealing much with time series data. It's not predictive in a sense it's just sort of classifying and understanding concepts so to have it to give it some sort of autonomy or, or be like an agent with um some uh level of yeah agent like agency um that that's dealing dealing with game. yeah dealing with time series data uh and yeah in an environment would that be more like reinforcement learning on the with with a a sense of uh, so I mean, if you're talking not AGI, but machine learning models that exist right now that are just just things like decision trees that looking at a bunch of features, then yeah, um, yeah you wouldn't use this model that is used to create images. Um, you you like t- time series data is more like LSTMs at least for well music and and then like um, yeah but i guess i mean personally i try to think about how to predict the stock market the the least amount possible because it's mostly staring trying to get um information from noise yeah it is random it's it's, it's pretty it's it's hugely random random. and so like I guess personally, I could feel that it's a colossal waste of time if you're looking at what is mostly random noise, but spending all this attention trying to squeeze signal out of it. Like, but if you if you were able to give it like all the trading signals, all the indicators, yeah, and you somehow just like, and it was able to process that, like you know, faster than a human, like would it be able to make money? Yeah. Like yeah. Good. But then I guess what I was saying was it would be able to make more money much easier, easier using ways where it has direct influence. Mm, like, so it's not simply a passively looking at a line on a chart, but it's just making the money, you know. So one of the uh, one of the top performing hedge funds, uh, Renaissance, right? They're completely like quant. They're, they're, they were started by, who was the mathematician? Yeah, but uh, it basically just a bunch of MIT um, computer guys, right? And mm. mostly dealing with um, I'm I'm there's probably I mean definitely a lot of neural net sort of stuff, but I'm assuming it's more just they have a good knowledge of the market, and then they have like some good uh good strategies and the models to to sort of back it back it up. But yeah, they're the highest performing. I think the highest performing hedge fund. Yeah, well, certainly there are a lot of hedge funds out there that are using deep learning these days and high dimensional data sets. Is it that high dimensional though? I don't think it is. You know, like what? What are you? What, like, I mean, maybe sentiment analysis where you're actually doing language processing on, you know, Twitter or or yeah. uh, other, you know, other forums. <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. But as as I said, I uh, try to think about the combination of machine learning and stock market investment sort of, sort of the least amount because it's, yeah, it's looking at so much noise, whereas there's so many other sources of signal like in that medical data or surveying data where you know there's really is signal there, so it's not hopeless, the, the yeah. project. Yeah. Um, yeah, I Want to want to embark on non hopeless projects where possible? <laughs> like you, yeah. This is uh, you know, um, what is it like? Rational theory, um, or ra- rational actor theory, like or, or you know, market theory, where you know everyone is actually a rational actor, but you know, the, most of the time it's just complete random. 
Yeah, well, if it if something is random, then don't play the game, I suppose, right? Like, I don't know. There are so many people out there who, who gamble. Um, what is the, gambling isn't necessary, necessarily. Yeah, so I, I think circling back to the, the original, like we went a bit off topic there, I think, for a second. Um, yeah, uh, back to just sort of the idea. I think what we're getting out of uh, Dali is this sort of idea of artificial general intelligence, like the, the yeah. possibilities of that. You know, possible right. nefarious possible ways it could be. Well, just that that its capability um, doesn't seem that far off it to me, which is to say the ideas that it's understanding are pretty advanced. And so uh, to some degree, I think artificial general intelligence is just having lots more of those in a kind of coherent thought stream, yeah. as it were. So it seems to be able to understand concepts. That, that, that's, Many I concepts, think, the, yeah. The idea that that's yeah. where it's so like... Uh, so in a, like novel and innovative um but in terms of like time series data and things like that uh or, or like long-term planning like you know it's not it's not dealing with any that's right so it's not a fully generic algorithm yet but um uh, yeah it, it feels like it's the beginning of something uh in the in that direction or just just an example of the level of awareness that we're at now which um it's it's pretty amazing it is, incre- it is incredible. So you mm. think that in the future, it will like sort of cross over into these where it's able to understand, maybe to, to understand narrative, you have to have the, like an understanding of time, right? An yeah. Understanding of- so yeah, I think to be an artificial general intelligence, you have to be able to form plans and to have a kind of coherency of a long-term thought that gets enacted over time type stuff. So you, you, you ultimately need a form of memory and a stream of consciousness, as it were. So uh, the relationship of concepts over over time, how they sort of evolve, because at the moment it sort of has this de- yeah. very basic understanding of, you know, maybe like how yeah. words relate to images. Well, and- if you th- think about what it takes to become alive, if you've got some droid working that lifts cardboard boxes from one side to the other, you'll have humans that scroll past its viewing that it doesn't really recognize. It's not properly alive enough to to recognize them and pay attention to them. So this act of living is partly to do with our ability to control our attention and to have meta control over our attention. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, like, and there's this idea, and, and this I think this is this old idea in... Uh, you know, coming out of cybernetics. I mean, originally, like Watson and Crick, you know, the idea of the neural net was basically, you know, like an artificial neuron, right? Like that, you know, that was the, the idea. Um, but, you know, the idea of now of of simulating a, a human brain or, or having the same sort of processes. But what we're finding is a lot of the, uh, a lot of the uh, processes or the, modules in you know in human cognition are very useful like attention like yeah. long-term memory uh like you know just basic uh visual recognition you know like your visual cortex you know is, is very similar to like a, a cnn sort of thing um but we're definitely being inspired by aspects of human f- physiology and animal physiology uh but i don't i don't think it's necessary to have necessarily like a hardware breakthrough Wait, I said Watson and Crick. That's DNA, right? That, um, I'm thinking, um, uh, who was the guy who? It's actually a really interesting story. The um, uh, the guy who invented, uh, yeah, uh, like neural net sort of thing. Uh, I have I'm to sure. Google this uh, because, like, it was kind of like I think it was the, like, one of the guys was kind of a bit of a tragic case. You know, you, he's I think the guy who uh, Goodwill Hunting was sort of based on. Oh right. Um. Uh, I forget his name. Yeah. Well, I. Yeah. Let's let's not spend time thinking about names. Um. Yeah. There's a there's a creation story there, but um, they're steadily getting more and more advanced. Um. Hmm. So, uh, Dolly, I think is a sign of things to come, and. Uh, yeah.
it's uh, interesting times. It's very interesting. Uh, so do you give it like a time frame of like, I mean, OpenAI has been releasing things pretty steadily over, you know, over the, you know the past few years. I'm I'm always amazed when they come out with something and it's just like, oh, like you know, um, yeah, I'd I'd say within thirty years. Thirty years, what full like human level uh, AGI? I'm not sure human level is a very good word. Uh, so it shouldn't be compared to human. It'll no, be different. Be, it, it, it'll like, be different because there'd be many things that'd be much much better than humans at. So yeah. to call it a human level something might be a bit strange. And we shouldn't try to model it off human consciousness yeah. or, or human cognition. Yeah. So like its ability, for example, to generate digital content like video streams uh, in due course, uh, yeah, that'll be much better than what people can make. It'll be able to make them up from scratch fully digitally. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, within 30 years, I would say. 30 years. All right. <laughs> Let's, uh, I can't wait. <laughs> mm, uh, mm. All right. Uh, should we wrap that up? For sure. Uh, thank you for listening, everyone. Yeah, cheers. Bye for now. Bye.